Thank you, sir. Uh, we have Wendy Moeller from Compass Point uh, to explain uh, the proposal to rewrite our planning and zoning code. Oh, we went through the RFQ process and we were specifically looking for firms that had a very good background in, in code rewrites. Um, the direction I have initially received when I put together this, this scope of work was that we or you know the city is looking for a pretty much a complete rewrite um, that being because the the code you know was originally I think you said 95 so we're over 20 years old there's been some you know patchwork and some you know tweaks through the years and that's pretty common but this would allow you to go back and identify any of those major issues. We would work to fix any inconsistencies, um, really try to modernize the code, so we'll start addressing things like sustainability. The one thing that uh, Ruth and I have problems with almost all the time is knowing what it is that the current code says, because a lot of times we kind of have to guess. I mean, it's not real clear, and it, having the rewrite doesn't mean that you make it stricter but at least you make it more predictable so that somebody can look at it and say okay here's here's what I have to do or what I can do or here's my options the way our code is written now it's almost impossible to tell in a lot of situations if if the Board of Zoning Appeals if every week they have a request for a fence height variance maybe the the solution is not to uh, have more flexibility maybe it's to increase the fence height so that you don't have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals or anybody else because if everybody agrees that you know instead of a six-foot fence a seven-foot fence is reasonable make that the standard that way everybody knows and everybody's treated the same um, but you know the problem with always having to go for a variance is that different people can be treated differently and that that really becomes unfair let's say sections of the code are rewritten and under the new rewritten version of a code a business or a home is now not in compliance with the current code um, is this something that these properties would have been grandfathered in under the old code or is this something that's going to cause anxiety from people in businesses because I've heard a little bit of this. Um, that the language that of non-conforming uses is, is grandfathering. So those uses, if they were legally established, or those structures, if they were legally established, and then this new code changes it, and they no longer conform, they would be grandfathered. Thank you, Mr. President. The next item is vehicle purchases for both the Public Works Department and the Police Department. Um, the city investigated purchasing these vehicles from the state list price, but they were higher than what we believed we could obtain through a bidding process. So the city bid out uh, v certain vehicles as a package to both for both the Public Works Department and the Police Department. Um, Kowalski Ford was the sole bidder, uh, but did bid prices lower than state list. Um, the, the bid was for a 2018 Explorer, um, a 2018 F-150 and a 2018 transit van. The uh, request and uh, the authorization from the administration would be $29,219 for the Explorer, $29,995 for the F-150 and $24,385 for the transit van. This was reviewed by the Public Service Committee and recommends to City Council that we award the bid to Kowalski Ford. Yes, uh, this property is the existing bank on the corner of Miller and Walker Roads, as well as the office building to the immediate north. Uh, both buildings will be raised. Uh, Planning Commission and Council had previously reviewed this for the rezone to the multifamily, and the units that are going to be located on this property are three 10-unit single-story apartment buildings, identical to the ones that are immediately to the north of this. The one thing I give the applicant credit for is they're going to do an extensive amount of landscaping on this corner. They're going to remove driveway cuts to both Miller and Walker Roads so the traffic goes internal to the existing development. So, uh, and they are asking for this to be passed as emergency tonight so they can get con started with construction here this spring. So, uh, once again, the look of the buildings will be identical. Uh, in addition to the extensive amount of landscaping that they're going to do 
for those properties that are going to be looking at the intersection. So I think you know, we've got two vacant, you know, pretty much abandoned buildings in that area. So this will be a nice improvement. It'll clean it up and, and provide, you know, more residential space in that area. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, about two weeks ago, uh, the council met after the uh, council meeting. Uh, we met in an open session. Uh, we scored the candidates as we did at the last time when we appointed Mr. Shondel. Uh, we had an open discussion. And through the discussion and the scoring, I, I will be making a recommendation this evening. Right, this way, I move to approve the appointment of Eileen Campbell as a council ward three member for the term expiring December 31st, 2019. Uh, in discussion, as I said before, um, I was proud of the fact the, the process that we did. Uh, it's the second time that uh, we've used the process like that uh, to appoint a council person with an open interview session. And uh, I think we have an excellent candidate here. Uh, Mrs. Campo, in her resume, she uh, stated, I would like to follow Mr. Miner's example of serving others in Avon Lake by filling the Ward 3 council position. My family moved to Avon Lake in 1977, and after leaving college, uh, leaving for college, job opportunities out of state, my husband and I choose to buy a home in Avon Lake in 1993. Our four children have benefited from attending the Avon Lake schools, and they're now in the process of starting their lives outside of our home. Uh, my careers in business world and the education environment have provided me with experiences that allow me to be an asset to Avon Lake City Council. And as, as part of the interview process, uh, I was very impressed. Uh, she had mentioned issues dealing and ideas dealing with economic development, um, the importance of Ford Motors, um, that city services have to be done efficiently, and that um, how the city is developing in terms of blight and how we're going to develop, such as what we talked about this evening with the uh, comprehensive work plan. Uh, she also noted that the lake is a great resource, and uh, she had uh, organizational skills uh, that I think will become very important in this role, and she had a great outlook in terms of working with members to try to resolve issues, which is always important for a council uh, when you have seven different individuals with sometimes different ideas that we work on that and uh, try to come to a conclusion. If not, then the next issue we again work to try to come to a conclusion. So I think those skills are certainly important in this uh, the very unspring like week that we had last week was a benefit to the city of Avon Lake because mrs. Campbell made the rounds and I don't think that any new council uh, elect ever got to see an interview and discuss items with more department heads and more city officials than mrs. Campo did so she wanted to do a lot of work outside and enjoy the Sun well that was not to be but uh, <laughs> we certainly benefited from her diligence and her uh, responsible uh, use of her time during that very cold wintry week we experienced last week so we're going to be glad to have her aboard so with that any further discussion Ms. Rossman with the roll please Mr. Arnold yes Mr. James yes Mr. Koss yes Mr. O'Donnell yes Mr. Zuber yes I Eileen Campo the undersigned appointed member of the council of the city of Avon Lake Ohio do solemnly swear that I am a resident and a qualified elector of said city. And I further swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge the duties of the office of member of the Avon Lake City Council during my continuance in said office of an elective term expiring December 31st, 2019. Congratulations. I'd like to say a couple words or you're welcome well thank you very much I uh, appreciate the vote of confidence and uh, appointing me to fill mr. Miners the remainder of his term we have this evening a need for a public hearing so, um, so I will open that up this deals with a public hearing upon the proposed amendment to the planning and zoning code section 1244.02 entitled permitted uses this morning I did uh, participate in the kickoff of appreciation week uh, for the safety forces of Lorain County uh, as this is the fight against Lorain County's opiate epidemic week and members of the drug board and our community engagement work group uh, put together some baskets that were being delivered today to the fire departments and tomorrow to the police departments 
And uh, so they have a basket full of all kinds of goodies, including letters and, and drawings and pictures from little kids thanking the police departments for doing an outstanding job. I'd, I'd like to commend Valerie Ross, Marin, and Priscilla for their efforts putting out these huge volumes of material. Last Friday, it was quite an endeavor, and they did a great job, and they cleaned up some things they needed to clean up, and uh, last minute added some stuff, and it was all done perfectly. So we're lucky to have such great employees at, at City Hall here. I agree with that, Mayor. Nice job.